All right, I'm with Sheila Cox. It's nice to see you. You've uh, been to a few conventions and you've I heard have. a few speeches. What did I, you think of this one? I was at the, the convention when his father retired. That's how old I am. <laughs> I thought he hit it out of the park, and what was interesting was, in advance of him speaking, you had several putative future leadership candidates, so you actually had to measure them up against him, and I think he still has uh, has the royal jelly, for wow. sure. So, what, did you think, uh, in terms of just what he hit on, uh, did he hit the right chords? I think he did. I think he brought the crowd to their feet when he was talking about woke and wake up. And I think that's going to be a recurring theme. And also uh, the support for um, Made in Canada solutions and not necessarily going out of the country to, you know, make a pussyfoot with Elon Musk or somebody like that. So I thought he hit a lot of notes. He also hit notes on poverty and I think on uh, lifting children up and lifting families up that are important to liberal values because sometimes the party can move a little bit too far to the right. So, but would you say this party is to the right or to the left when it comes to Justin Trudeau? Oh, I think the party is probably a little bit more... I think Justin Trudeau is actually very, a very progressive leader. I thought the first panel was actually more Bay Street related, I felt, and I thought that he actually brought the message home to Main Street, and it's Main Street where you win elections, not necessarily Bay Street. Now, so you know all about leaderships. You've uh, run in a few leaderships yourself, and you know when someone is uh, getting a rough time from adversaries. Would you say that anyone's jockeying for a job here, or do you think that Justin Trudeau has it in the bag? I think Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister, has control of the agenda and, and the support of the party. I think there are obviously future potential candidates who want to remain in the wings and be supportive but uh, keep their options open and that was obvious tonight with the person who he was introduced by, the people who were on the panel and so uh, it was it was an interesting night. For those of us who watch politics long term, uh, you're always looking at the long game as well. Because right. he has said he's going to run again, that he yeah. wants to take the party into the next election. And he Sometimes people that have to say that, but do you believe that? Yes, I think when he said it earlier in the year, there was always a kind of an escape clause, but I think tonight he made it very clear that he's going to be there, and he's going to be there for the long haul, because he feels that there are things that need... I think he feels the need to continue the reconciliation process and some things that he really believes in, but I think he's also very worried, as are Liberals, about what would happen if Mr. Polyev actually formed a government. So there's that piece that plays as kind of the to and fro of of political change that scares people. Okay, anything else to add? No, just I thought it was fascinating because like I said, a lot of people go there to watch the speech and some of us go there to see who the next person might be. So that's what I was looking at. Did you identify a next no, person? No, no, I just, I, I had some uh, pluses. Some people surprised me positively and some less so. Okay, <laughs> well thanks very much for your insights. Thank you very much, okay. Julie, thanks.